folks, Jim from Slick Audio. Ding, ding. Um, I am here to show you. We are retooling the studio and putting in some uh, fresh uh, RME and antelope gear. And um, I want to basically show you what some of the connections are. So this is this is very much a uh, meant to be a beginner's tutorial. So don't be concerned with the price of these devices that you're looking at. Uh, and the you know and or its complexity. What I just want to show you is the you know the various I/O connectors, the connectors and the jacks and stuff uh, that are on the front and the back, and and explain it. So if you don't know what they are, uh, hopefully this will help you understand. So uh, we'll start with the front. Uh, what we have here at the top is an Antelope Audio OCX HD. Uh, it's a, it's called a clock. Um, I'll explain the clocking when we uh, when we get a little bit farther in. Uh, this guy here is an RME Fireface UFX Plus, so this is their Thunderbolt and USB 3 uh, interface, their flagship, and then two of their flagship preamps, uh, they're what they call the Mics to See. Um, interesting name, eh? So uh, these are eight channel preamps, and as you can see, they have uh, these quarter inch jacks in the front for each channel, and these quarter inch jacks are TS, TRS, uh, or what they call line input. So if you have an instrument, you could actually plug it directly into the front, which is kind of nice because uh, a lot don't have that. Um, I want to point up to this particular type of connection right here. This is called a combo jack. Um, it's made by Neutrik, and the, uh, the not that you need to remember that, but the combo jack is basically an XLR. So if you have an XLR male, this would be an XLR female connection. And then you also have a TS slash TRS, which stands for tip sleeve, or, uh, and tip ring, tip, TRS, tip ring sleeve. So what that means is tip sleeve is your mono jack, quarter inch jack, and your TRS or tip ring sleeve is a stereo jack. So it's the one that has the two black bands in it instead of just one. So that's uh, so it's cool because you can plug either or into this. Um, so a microphone would be a, a male connection. It needs a female. So plug it into the front, use it an XLR cable, or you can use a, a TS or a TRS. So without any ado, I'm going to spin this baby around. And uh, this is actually on and running right now, at least the one piece is. So um, let's uh, unplug some cables here to at least let you see a little bit better. And um, I just can't unplug this one up there because it's live. So that that should be sufficient, I think, for uh, for the purposes of uh, this video. So let's let's start with this guy here, which is the main interface. Again, this is up and live and running. So this is a Thunderbolt interface, Thunderbolt two interface. Um, it is. Uh, I'm not pulling it out because it's literally connected to a machine right now, but uh, so that would be Thunderbolt 2, and this would be USB 3. Uh, it's, it's, you can see it's higher. It's got an extra little bump on the top of it uh, as opposed to a USB 2. Um, so that's uh, basically how you can connect this particular device to your computer, which would be how it talks to the DAW. Um, so let me point out some other types of connectivity. Um, for those of you who don't know what this kind of connector is, it is a MIDI connector, musical instrument digital interface, MIDI. So, um, you know, one would ask, what would you use that for? Uh, a ton of things, but uh, in its most simple form or common use, I should say, would be a controller, a keyboard, piano, you know, and it would plug in via MIDI and you could actually record uh, through us using a virtual instrument, a virtual synthesizer, um, and it would record the MIDI data. So that's a MIDI connector. Uh, let's talk about these. These guys are what's called ADAT. Uh, ADAT or optical connectors um, use uh, Toslink cables, Toslink connectors. And uh, so that is one way. Each, each connector in and out is eight channels. So... Um, there, th that's a very, very, very common way to link uh, uh, devices together, um, but it does have limitations in speed. So uh, I don't want to get involved in that. I'm, the whole idea is, again, to show you in a simplified form what this is, so I don't want to make this video insane. Um, I'm going to ignore this right here as a USB piece, but um, and I'm going to skip this and come back to this last. 
So this guy right here, pull this out. That is what they call a MADI connector, M-A-D-I. Uh, yes, another acronym in the world. So uh, it uses, this is a fiber optic connection and, um, and uses what's known as a, an SC. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's referred to as a snap, snap click connector, but it doesn't really mean snap click. It has nothing to do with that at all. But it's a, it's a type of fiber optic connection that's pretty common out in the world um, and uses either 50 nanometer or 62 and a half nanometer fiber. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's how Matty connects. So each, uh, uh, these devices are capable of, of eight channels uh, each, but this device is capable of talking Matty 64. So it'll do 64 channels of audio over this optical cable in a serial fashion. I'll explain that in a second. So actually, while we're talking about Matty, let's talk about Matty. So there's a Matty card, as you can see, in this mic's to see. So basically what I'd do is I'd come out of the Matty here to the end of the Matty here. And that would, that would give uh, this, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going the other way around. It's, it's the opposite, my bad. So the out of here goes to the in of here, right? So that would give eight channels of preamps. So we could also do this via analog but and, and plug them into... through 16, uh, et cetera, et cetera, up to channels, uh, to 64 channels. So it's actually pretty cool uh, the way that their, you know, Matty implementation works. Now, you can also use these connectors, which is BNC, um, to, to do that using coax cable. So think of coax cables kind of like your cable on, on uh, uh, the back of your television or your cable box, uh, for those of you who use that anymore. But uh we're going to talk about that type of connector and, and with this guy here in just a second. So, uh, but the best way is to go optical. Um, then, of course, we have uh, an XLR type connection here, and this is called AES-CBU. Uh, it is a digital format. It does uh, two channels per. Um, so it's a stereo uh, in, stereo out, uh, digital. And um, it's used. It's just not used that frequently, but uh, but it is used. Um and then here we have some TRS uh, connect connections. So this would be for balanced line out. When they say balanced, that means that these are TRS, tip ring sleeve, stereo, but they're not really stereo. It's meant for grounding purposes. So, and then this is obviously XLR. So these guys, basically what they're doing is they're feeding you two XLRs out and then they're giving you the other uh, six channels in TRS. Um, most uh, active monitors, speakers today, uh, can handle uh, either or, um, but uh, there's adapters that'll that'll go you know either direction, so it's not a big deal. Um, so moving along to uh, to this down, you know, let's look at the mics to see for a second. We talked about the Matty card, um, and I'm going to skip these guys for a minute. So or we talked about AES. So here's an AES connector in what they call a DB25. Uh, connection. So the DB25 basically is a breakout. So this is capable of four channels, stereo, you know, four, four channels of AES uh, audio out of this 25 pair. Um, you know, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because it's, it's just not that widely used. So, uh, and especially in the beginner, beginner's world, which is the, what this video is meant for, um, don't worry about the AES for now. Just let it go. Let it go, man. Let it go. So, and then, of course, uh, as I explained before, we have these are your microphone inputs. Um, balanced means microphone. See? Balanced. And then, of course, these would be the analog outputs. Now, 
I'm not going to use the analog outputs of this. I'm going to be using Maddie to go back into this and feed them all digitally. So we're using the high quality converters. So I'm using the high quality preamps of the mics to see, and I'm using the high quality converters of the uh, of the uh, yeah that doodad the UFX Plus Fireface UFX Plus. Now let's finish up and talk about this stuff. So there's this thing called word clock. So remember I said that thing was a clock and you were probably looking at it and going, well, geez, it doesn't look like it doesn't tell time to me. Well, it's not meant to tell time. It's meant to tell these devices and everything connected to it the same time all the time, because in the digital world, timing is everything. Um, when you think about it, a CD is 44.1 kilohertz, right? So that means it's 44,100 times a second it's sampling uh, audio. It's sampling a, a, a piece of audio. Um, so let's just stick with the 44.1, you know, CD quality for now. It doesn't really matter. So if you're doing 192K, it's at 192,000 times, right? So it doesn't really matter. So whatever the speed it is, all these devices have to be. So when, when that first beat of that 44,100 hits, and then the second beat, and the third beat, and the fourth beat, I'm calling it beats, but it's not really beats. It's really clock cycles, right? So clock cycle one, clock cycle two, sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, right on down to 44,100, and then all of a sudden it wraps back around and starts over again, right? So that would be it all in one second. Um, if they aren't all talking together and, and on the exact same clock together, you're going to get, think about it. If this is trying to send something to this and this isn't ready for it, what would happen? Drops, right? So you're going to get artifacts. You're going to get noise. You're going to get what's called digital jitter. Digital jitter is the uh, technical term for freaking noise. <laughs> you're going to get a lot of noise. Um, it is very critical for pristine audio for the, a, a clock to be very good and to have all your devices clocked together. All the digital devices need to be clocked together. Now, there's a lot of protocols that will do that automatically, like Dante, for example, uh, does its own clocking. So any Dante device uh, clocks, but any non-Dante device does not. A case in point, my current set up with my Focusrite RedNet is a RedNet Dante implementation. So all those devices, I don't need to clock together because RedNet's clock is every bit as accurate or more than, than, any, than any other type of uh, clocking. But I also have other digital devices connected. So, ah, so therefore, it was like, well, now I've got one source clock source for one, but it doesn't talk to the other. Well, we have this thing called the word clock uh, that talks to uh, to every device in just about in the world that requires it. And um, so what we'd be doing is we'd be connecting uh, WC, word clock. We'd be connecting these down to each of these devices. And uh, and we can daisy chain them, you know, they're out to, to an in, to an out, to an in, to an out, to an in, to an out. And then you have to do, see this little thing called term, that means termination. Uh, it's the terminator. It's the worminator. <laughs> that's the that's the worm at the end of the tequila bottle. <laughs> it's called the worminator. You puke your guts out after you eat it. Um, I never did that, by the way, either. Uh, I don't no worms. But anyways, you have to have a termination point um, at the uh, uh, you know at at the end of the word clock cycle because it's it's the way BNC works. It's the way clocking works. So. Uh, so it is critical that your last device is terminated. Uh, everything else in between is not. And, um, you know, the cool thing about this device here, uh, it has so many bloody outputs. I mean, I literally could feed every single device I have. Now, I do have more devices, uh, light pipe driven devices. That I'm going to be connecting to these ADAC connectors. So I have eight channels and eight channels. So 16 additional channels beyond the 16 channels I'm connecting up here. So I will have... 32 channels of external I.O., and I will have uh, 12 channels of internal I.O., so that's a whole hell of a lot of I.O. Uh, to deal with. Um, so, uh, but anyway, so that is that is clocking in, in a nutshell. Uh, so again, we're doing it to keep everything together, everything synchronized, right? So everything's, you know, nice, pristine audio. Everybody's talking the same language. You know, if you were rowing a boat, would you want somebody rowing this way? Well, somebody's rowing that way, the boat would turn and go nuts. Everybody's rowing perfect in the same, in unison. Uh, the boat goes nice and fast uh, 
you know, forward. So that's the whole point here is to get uh, pristine audio in to the machine. So this nice little T4200 that's being built here is uh, going to be for our studio. Um, we're, we're finally retiring the R4000. Um, and it served us quite well, but uh, it's time to show you folks uh, some newer tech and and uh, and to do some better demos uh, than we've done, um, which, you know, the Dante stuff has actually prevented us from doing because it just doesn't work well with OBS and some of the other applications for video uh, that we wanted to do. So I could never do it properly, not without a lot of hoop jumping and, and latency and garbage, and therefore it wouldn't be telling the truth. And that makes me mental. So uh, when we get this in here in the next week or two, um, it will be uh, it will be nice, and then we're going to start doing some some on screen videos uh, with some audio as well. But um, but anyways, uh, hopefully that answers. That's the majority of the type of connectors. Uh, there are a few others um, that exist out there, but this is what you're going to see for the most part on any interface that you buy. Uh, if you're buying a less expensive interface, you're going to see a USB 2 connector. So it looks similar to this guy here, but, you know, remember I said it's not, it's not blue, it's black, and it doesn't have that little tip thingy on the top of it. It's just it's USB. You guys have all seen USB, right? I don't know why I'm holding this, but I'm holding this. Um, so, uh, yeah, so in a nutshell, that's, uh, oh, here, USB. There's a USB 2 connector. Ding, 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 ding. Now there's a USB control uh, and that would be for plugging this guy, this USB cable, into that computer so I can actually control that clock remotely instead of having to physically touch the front of it and spin the dial. Uh, how lazy is that? Uh, but it's pretty cool. And then, uh, of course, we, you know, if you're wondering what the hell this thing is, uh, this is an RME. It's a little remote control uh, for uh, this device here. And um, it connects actually into this device right there. It actually says remote, and that's where this connects into here. I can't do it now because it's live. But uh, basically, this would give me remote control access to um, to RME's uh, unique interface, uh, which I, again, it's called Total Mix FX. I don't want to get into, you know, a proprietary thing right now. I just wanted to show you the, connect the connectivity and what does what, why it does it, and uh, explain how. And I think I did. So if there's any questions, give us a yell and, uh, or a different type of connector that you're not sure what it is, uh, you know, give us a yell. Uh, I'll answer it. Thank you much. Uh, we will be at Summer Nam, remember? I have no idea what the hell our booth number is. I can't remember it. Chris can't remember it. Nobody can remember it. Um, look on our website. We'll have it on our website. And by the way, we're going to have a new website coming online in the next week or two. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be a beauty. And I mean a real beauty. So uh, store format's changing. Everything's going to look different. It's going to look way cooler. So see you guys, Summer Nam. Uh, we'll be at AES this year. 